Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining today's webinar, MicroStrategy Webinar. Uh -huh. My name is Sandy Patel, and I'm with TDA, a technical assistance provider for HUD. I will be serving as your host today. I'm going to run through some technical instructions on how to ask questions and things like that before I hand it off to our wonderful presenters. <clears throat> today's webinar audio is broadcasted through your computer speakers. Only use the dial-in number if you're unable to use the computer audio. Please close the email and all other programs on your computer and silent your cell phones and give your undivided attention to our presenters today. If you have any technical problems, you can email me at spatel at tdainc.org or you can send a chat message to the host. That will come directly to me, and I can help you through any issues that you might be experiencing. All participants will be muted during the webinar. Questions can only be asked in writing using the Q&A tool. You can ask a written question at any point during the presentation. The panelists will collect those and answer them when we stop for questions. To ask a written question, use the Q&A tool. It is located on the right-hand side of your WebEx screen. You can see a screenshot of what it looks like up on the screen. If you do not see it, click on the triangle and it will expand the box. Please ask questions to all panelists. Then just type your question in the box and click send. Again, those you could do at any point during your presentation. Questions will be answered verbally, and some simple questions may be answered in writing through the Q&A tool. We may not be able to get to all the questions, but we will try to answer the common ones first. If you have any additional unanswered or private questions, please email those to jalpha at tdainc.org. With that, um, I'm going to hand it off to Hannah Nelson with HUD. Hannah? Thank you, Sandy. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. Perfect, okay. Alrighty, and are you able to see the um, first slide of the presentation as well? Yes, we can. Perfect, all right. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to some. Um, welcome to today's DRGR Reports Module training. Um, we actually haven't facilitated a dedicated DRGR Reports training in a couple of years, so I'm hoping you all are just as excited as we are. Um, and I hope that you all find this training really helpful and even use this webinar recording in the future to train um, your staff who were unable to attend today or even new staff you on board in the, new, in the near future. Um, so grantees who have experience with DRGR for sure, I hope, know how helpful um, reports can be to help with day-to-day -day, like operations and overall grants management. So. Um, I'm just hoping that you all find this, this very helpful, and please ask, ask lots of questions. Um, and if we can't get you an answer today, we will get you an answer in the near future, as Sandy mentioned. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So first, again, I'm going to briefly introduce myself. Um, my name is Hannah Nelson, and I am a DRGR CPD specialist with HUD headquarters um, with the Office of Disaster Recovery. Um, as a member of our operations team, and I am based out of Houston, Texas. Um, I'm going to let Jennifer introduce herself in a minute. Um, Jennifer, Jennifer is actually going to um, conduct the live demonstration in the reports module this afternoon, so we're really excited about that piece. Um, but before Jennifer introduces herself, I just wanted to give a big thank you to Sandy with TDA and Joe Slaughter, who is with HUD, um, HUD's DRGR team, for helping us out this afternoon. Joe will be the one answering questions in the chat. So please, you know, ask as many questions as possible. We're here to help. Um, so I'm going to pass it to Jennifer for a second to introduce herself. Great. Thank you, Hannah. Um, excited to be here. Um, my name is Jennifer Alpha. I'm with TDA Consulting, and TDA is a technical assistance provider for HUD. 
and TVA has been leading um, a lot of the training efforts out in the um, in the world where we do the in-person trainings, some of the online trainings as well as we switch to more online platforms. And so we always incorporate a a portion of the overall DRGR workshops to MicroStrategy. However, it's always just a maybe 20 minutes at the end of the second day. And so it's really nice to be able to give uh, MicroStrategy more of a, a full treatment and really get to demonstrate the different components and allow folks to ask more questions. Um, as Hannah said, the reports are invaluable when it comes to managing your program and really understanding the data and information that's been put into DRGR. So um, thanks for being here, and we're really excited to, to share this time together. Thank you, Jennifer. That was great. Okay, let's quickly go over some webinar objectives. Um, so as far as objectives for this training, um, we are going to focus on how you all as grantees can utilize these DRGR reports or MicroStrategy um, and basically utilize these reports to help you improve data accuracy and completeness, um, to troubleshoot any data errors potentially that come up, um, and then also help reduce the amount of time and effort necessary to comply with any reporting requirements. Um, so I do want to mention here um, that we are not going to address any disaster recovery policy or programmatic related questions um, this afternoon. So this is strictly just a technical demonstration of how to use the reports and how to use MicroStrategy. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you ever have any policy or programmatic related questions, you know, feel free to reach out to your grant manager um, to get those answered. Um, and then, so as far as the format for this webinar, so I'm going to first kick us off with going over a few slides here. Um, just bear with me. I know everyone's really excited, probably really excited about the live demonstration in the system. Um, and also I wanted to mention, please feel free, once we get to the portion of the live demonstration, please feel free if you're able, if you have two screens or um, are sitting in a room with a group. Um, if you want to actually log into DRGR and follow along with Jennifer, I think that's also really helpful as well if you're able to do that. Um, but as far as the slides, I did just want to say um, I'm going to go through the slides pretty quickly, but I feel like it's always a good reference to use after this training and to share with staff who are not able to join. Um, and again, this training will be recorded and the training putting the slides will be available on the HUD exchange in the next couple of weeks. And we'll send out a list of announcement once those materials are available. Okay, so next we're going to quickly start with two poll questions. And Sandy's actually going to get those populated here. So if you guys can um, go ahead and answer those questions once you see the option available. Um, so the first poll question is, how much experience do you have with pulling macro strategy reports? And then the second question is, which category are you most interested in? Just to get an idea of the group um, as far as experience. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so what I was saying is I don't have the BR2s booked. Is it okay if I still move the BR3s into that group? I believe you can. And so then what I would recommend what I would Sandy? recommend is get in touch with groups. Okay. Tell them that you have the allotment in BR two, but you do have individual bookings booked in BR three that you would like to move into the groups. Okay. Into the group. Okay. Um they will ask you the question what's gonna happen with the BR two talents that you have within the group. Correct. If if you end up not booking those so sorry about that, you all. Um, but I think the poll should be live now, and you should be able to answer the questions. Um, Jennifer, let me know if you're unable to see the poll. I, I was able to see the poll. Okay, perfect. Okay. Probably had a chance. I think that it is still running, so it's been open for 
um, a minute and a couple seconds. So awesome. okay. give everybody just a few more seconds to answer, and then we can uh, slowly close it and we'll find the results. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So this poll will, will help us better understand um, kind of what your experience level is. Um, it's just helpful for us to know if we have mostly beginners or people who've been doing this for a while. And then knowing your reports category is just nice for us to kind of know what, what reports people think they'll use the most or are using the most. Um, we're not going to go through a full list of reports or anything like that, but we are going to um, you know, show you where you can access those reports. Um, and we definitely, uh, I see some results are up now, Hannah, so mm -hmm. I think you can go ahead and, and review them. Yeah, I see the results here. Okay, so the first question, let me go back a slide, um, was how much experience do you have with MicroStrategy? And it looks like the majority of the group, about half, um, answered less than a year, which, you know, that's great. That's, I'm happy that you all are here. Um, I think this training will be super beneficial for you all. I think it'll also be beneficial for the folks who um, answered and said that they're a pro, but um, it's good for us to just understand, kind of get a feel, as Jennifer mentioned, for the group. And then for the second question, which report category are you most interested in? Um, it's a pretty, pretty even, well, pretty close split. Most are interested in financial reports, then performance, and then administrative, um, which again is probably as expected. Um, and so for this second poll question, um, I really like this question um, just because I think, um, or not I think, we all have different like job responsibilities and people find different, different types of reports more beneficial than others. Um, just to ensure they're getting those like daily responsibilities and tasks completed. Um, so more to come on that later. Um, but we often are asked for a list or for us as HUD staff to give um, recommendations for popular reports. Um, but for me personally, I think that all of these reports are in the system are benef could be beneficial to anyone. You know, so we'll talk about that again later, but I just wanted to bring that up. Um, and I have a really good resource I will show you all towards the end of the presentation um, that I think will be helpful that lists all of the reports and report details. Okay, so let's officially get started with this so we can get to the live demo. Thank you all for answering the poll questions. Really appreciate it. Okay, so let's get started. So what is MicroStrategy, right? So you all have probably already noticed that myself and Jennifer were referring to um, the DRGR reports module as that, the reports module and MicroStrategy. So both are technically accurate, um, but I wanted to explain that MicroStrategy is the platform used to pull data that you all as grantees enter into, enter into DRGR and help assist us, HUD, and yourselves with data analysis, right? So MicroStrategy helps you all as grantees um, analyze and troubleshoot data, um, assist with you all measuring program progress towards those required targets and caps and expenditure deadlines. Um, it also helps us, HUD, and yourself with monitoring for compliance of all of those requirements and all of our notices and beyond. So again, MicroStrategy, like Jennifer mentioned, is invaluable. You guys should be utilizing reports as much as possible. I can't say that enough. Okay, so the next few slides are screenshots and I have some details here on um, accessing reports. Um, so here is a screenshot from DRGR. I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with this toolbar. But in order for you all to actually, well, after you've logged into DRGR, in order for you to access MicroStrategy or the reports module, um, you'll see in the toolbar here, highlighted in the, highlighted in yellow is a pie chart icon. And so once you click on that pie chart icon, um, you'll get a drop down for a sub menu, which you see highlighted here. 
And if you select reports as, as highlighted, you'll, it'll then um, bring up a second window in your browser and then you'll, that's how you access MicroStrategy. Pretty simple. So once that second browser window is available, you'll see the screens here. And so for you all as disaster recovery grantees, you all should always um, use the reports in the DRGR analytics folder, which is highlighted here. Once you click on that DRGR analytics folder, you'll see in the bottom screenshot, um, you'll, you'll see an option for four folders as listed here. So you'll see a, a folder for shared reports, my reports, history lists, and then my subscriptions. Um, and we are primarily today going to access the shared reports folder during the live demonstration because that's where the standard reports that HUD has created live, um, and you all have access to that folder. So, and that's also where the global reports folder live, and I'll show you those reports and describe them in a second. Okay, so this slide here kind of gives a description of those four folders that I just mentioned. Um, and so I won't read this verbatim, um, but it's something good to, to reference in the future. However, but high level, so the shared reports folder, as I just mentioned, is that's where the global reports that you all are probably familiar with, um, those reports are located in the shared reports folder and they're broken out into different categories like um, financial reports, performance reports, et cetera. The second folder um, you see here is the My Reports, um, and those are reports that are saved by you as, as the user. So, um, for example, if Jennifer has a global report that she's customized and she would like to access every month, she would save that version of the report to her My Reports folder, and we'll go over that soon in the presentation. So once she saves that report in the My Reports folder, um, she can whenever she logs out of DRGR MicroStrategy and logs back in, um, she can access that saved report in her My Reports folder. Um, and something to note there um, is that the the customizations that will remain the same for the report. However, when she goes in to access that report, let's say a week or two months later, and what's important to note about the My Reports folder is that the data is always going to be current. So meaning if she saved the report today and she went back to access that same, let's say, financial report um, a month from now, the customizations, how she set up the report will remain the same, but the data would be different, right? So she would see data. Um, so if her grantee had spent an additional, had drawn an additional $10 million, the financial data would be different in that report. So something to just keep in mind, and that'll make sense in a second while, why I'm explaining it that way. So my report is going to be current data. Then the next folder you see listed here is the history list. So basically, it's kind of the same as the My Reports folder in the sense that the customizations will remain the same once it's saved, but these reports are considered point-in-time data reports, right? So if Jennifer saved her financial report in the under her history list, when she came in and accessed the that report a week from now, she would see data from today. If she accessed the report next year, she would see data from today. So that's the difference between the two. My reports is current data, history list is um, data from the day in which the report was saved. And then the last folder is the My Subscriptions folder, which allows users to basically manage um, their report subscriptions that are set up. Um, and for those of you who, who don't know, I guess, what report script what report subscriptions are. Um, basically, once you set up a subscription um, for a particular report, you can have that report sent to your email on a certain schedule. And so um, it can be sent to your email or it could also be delivered to your history list. And we'll go over that in a second. 
Okay, so here, um, here's just a screenshot showing. So once you access the shared reports folder, you'll see a list of global reports that we were just talking about. Um, and so, you know, once again, just remember, you, ask, you get to the global reports folders by accessing shared reports. And the next slide actually includes a description of each of those global folders. Um, yeah, so here's another good slide to reference. I won't read everything here, but I think the global report names for each folder are pretty self-explanatory as far as kind of understanding what's, what types of reports are within each folder. But um, global admin is where you can find helpful like user information or details on, you know, responsible organizations that you set up in the system, um, certifications, et cetera. Um, and then the global finance folder is all things financial, um, but it's broken down at different levels between the reports. So it's broken down by grants, by projects, by activities, responsible organizations, you know, voucher level reports, et cetera. Um, so there's lots of good information in that folder. Um, then we have the global performance folder, which includes data on um, performance measures and accomplishments. So um, you'll see in there projected and planned and actual data entered at the grant and project and activity level. There, um, there's reports in there on addresses. So global performance is, is a good folder as well. Um, and then next we have global compliance. And so these are reports that show data um, related to system-generated flags in the system. Um, and then it also shows um, reports related to grantee entered events, which is um, where a grantee goes into the My Compliance module, Manage Compliance module, and enters in um, data on grantee level um, monitoring TA and audit events. Um, so if you all are not as familiar with the Manage by Compliance module, um, I would encourage you all to go and review the chapter in the DRGR user manual on the compliance module. Um, and also just go into that module and just search for different events and kind of play around in the system to kind of figure out what all is a part of the compliance module. Um, the next folder is the global history fo folder, and it contains um, some historical report reports that help you all um, kind of trace down the history of your grants and financial data. And then lastly, we have the Go global grants folder, um, and that folder includes grant level reports only for financial and um, performance data. So make sure you go, if you haven't already, for sure take a look at that global history and global grants folder, but all of these are super helpful as far as um, reports. Okay, let's go, next slide. All right, so here is a screenshot. So once you find the global report that you would like to access, um, once you click on the title name, and Jennifer will show you this once she starts her live demo, um, you'll see that a grid report, which is similar to the screenshot here, will be populated. So just wanted to show you all what the report will look like once you're in, this, once you're in the system and playing around. Um, so here, um, this is another good slide to just reference for the future. Um, Jennifer's gonna go over most of these functions during the live demonstration. Um, but I will mention here that the, the page by access and report filters can be very useful and helpful for you all. So you wanna make sure you understand how to use those features in the system. Um, it's definitely gonna make your life a lot easier for sure once you become comfortable with those functions. Okay. So here, um, the next couple of slides, I am going to briefly discuss modifying reports. Um, I just wanted you all to have like a visual visual representation, you know, in slides of what the screens look like in MicroStrategy when you're modifying reports. I'm not going to go into detail on these, but um, Jennifer is actually going to show you all how to do some of these features. Um, 
but here you'll see highlighted, you'll see the page by access, and um, you'll see the report filter details at the top. Um, those, again, are important functions that you all should make sure you understand how they work and will definitely help you all out in the future. Okay, this next slide um, is just going over some written notes as far as modifying reports as well. Another good reference. Um, it's good to mention here that you all do have the option to right click within columns to help move columns around within the grid report or um, sort different ways in the report. So on the slide before you saw I had, I had um, this section here highlighted where you see the, the column and then you'll see this submenu here. And so basically I got to the submenu by right clicking on the column. And we'll show an example in a step during the live demo, but I just wanted you all to kind of have instructions and understand what your options were here. Um, another cool feature is um, adding view filter condition function, um, which is really, I think, helpful, can be helpful to you all, because it allows you all as the user to further filter on a report. So. For example, if you are a large state grantee with, let's say, hundreds of responsible organizations or subrecipients, um, creating this view filter can allow you to only show data for certain organizations if you were asked, or maybe it'll um, you could filter the report to only show data for a particular region, um, or you know county or city level information. So I just I think it's really cool. It just allows you, gives you the option to further filter on the reports to show certain data. Okay, and here um, here's a slide showing um, the downloading reports feature. So once you're done customizing your report or you just you know go in here and access a report and you want to download a copy. Um, you have the option in the system to download the report into an Excel or PDF. And so you'll see in the toolbar here, we have the two icons highlighted where you can select Excel or PDF. Um, once you select that option, you'll, the screen will pop up below where it gives you the option to further format your reports. So, um, and Jennifer will go over this during the demo, but I just wanted to show you all where the icons were located. Um, you can also select Report Home, and there's a drop-down for Export, and then it's the same Excel or PDF option. But I just wanted to give you all a screen here showing how to do it. It's pretty simple once you get familiar with that. Okay, and so I'm going to wrap up here. The next couple of slides are related to um, saving to my reports in the history list and setting up subscriptions. Um, they're all pretty, pretty easy to do. It's just more so just understanding where you need to go and what information you should enter. Um, so the screenshot here shows how um, you access or how you can save to my reports, and so you. Simply just click on Report Home in the toolbar, go to Save As, and then you'll get this pop-up screen here. And you'll see um, you can save into the My Reports folder. You can rename the report, add any sort of description here. And once you hit OK, the report is saved. And then pretty similar um, process for the, the history list. Um, so you go to Report Home and go to Add to History List. And then you'll also have the option to rename the report and update the description, like if you wanted to add what day you pulled the report or additional information, you could do that and then you would hit save. We'll, we'll go over this during the demo. Um, here um, is how you can subscribe to the history list. And so again, a lot of your saving in um, subscription related functions are, are located under that report home tab. Um, and so you'll see here, in order to subscribe to the history list, you would go down to subscribe to and then select history list. Um, you'll 
fill in the information you see listed here, name the report. Um, you see the schedule option here, and so you'll, you're able to set up different time or time frames as far as when you would like to receive the report, whether it be monthly, weekly, daily, you know, at a certain time, you have options listed here, and then you hit OK, and um, you should receive that version of the report into your history list on whatever schedule you've set up. And then same thing for the email subscriptions, except in this case, once you set it up, um, you will actually receive a copy of the report through your email and not through your history list. You wouldn't have to log into MicroStrategy to get that, that email notification. Okay, and so I am going to wrap us up here with the resources slide, um, and then we can get to the fun part with Jennifer going, starting her live demonstration. But I, you know, I wanted to include some resources here that I think would be helpful for you all. Um, I think the DRGR user manual is always a good place to start whenever you have DRGR questions, and Chapter 35 in particular is specific to the reports module. It has really good screenshots and step-by-step -step instructions included in that chapter, um, describing in further detail what I just dis discussed and what Jennifer is planning to discuss in a few minutes. Um, and also, like I mentioned earlier, um, so our team is constantly being asked, you know, like which reports are popular and most used. Um, and like I said, I, I don't think there are in particular popular reports or even like most used reports. I, I think each report in the global folders can be helpful to any of us to complete, you know, whatever work we need to. So I wanted to, I, I included here a DRGR reports crosswalk, which is available on the HUD exchange. And this document is very helpful, it's very detailed, um, but it actually includes details for each of our global reports and it shows you which metrics and attributes and data fields are included in those particular reports. So um, I think this document is, is always good to start with if you're wondering, if, you, if you've been asked to pull certain data and you're not sure where to start, I would always start with this, ref, start by referencing this, this crosswalk because um, it'll help you figure out kind of which data is included in which reports and where to start. So I'm not sure. I may ask Jennifer to pull it up when she shares her screen. I don't, I don't know if the link will work right here. But um, I did just want to make sure you all were aware that the crosswalk was out there. Um, I actually think we are going to update it very soon. Um, but still, it's still a good place to start for you all. And I think that's, that's all I have. Again, we just wanted to go through these slides quickly so you all could reference them in the future, but um, we're looking forward to the live demonstration. So Jennifer, I'm gonna pass it over to you. I think I need to make you the presenter. Hey, I think I am now the presenter. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And tell me if what you see is Google. It's loading. Let's see. Or it's loading for me. I see it now, Jennifer. Okay, great. So I wanted to start here um, because it sounded like we have a good bit of beginners and some of you may be just even starting to use the RGR for the first time. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to walk it back to logging in because I'm going to have to log in anyway. Um, so if you go to Google and just Google DRGR login, you're going to get a page that looks like this. Um, I, I recommend not bookmarking the DRGR login page, but just going to a fresh login link every time you log in. That's what I do um, because computers store strange information and 
sometimes um, when you rely on a bookmark, sometimes you'll get an error when you're trying to log in. So I always recommend just starting fresh. And if you Google DRGR login um, and you go to the page that is specifically for DRGR, which on my list here is the second one down, um, this is, takes us to the HUD exchange um, and the disaster recovery reporting um, disaster recovery grant reporting system page on the HUD exchange. And this page has a lot of information. Um, so for those of you who are beginners, there is a wealth of knowledge here on this page. Um, I love for folks to be able to go and check this out. You have things like your guide tools and webinars. This webinar will show up on this page um, in probably a week or so once we get um, the, the transcript back. Um, and it's all 508 compliant and everything else, all the materials, the, the webinar video, the transcript, and the slides will all um, show up on the webinar page here. So if you need to access it, you can find it there. <clears throat> there are also things like data upload templates. Um, there are the fact sheets. So that fact sheet that um, Hannah mentioned for the reports crosswalk, well, you'll find it here. And I will, I'll show you that in a moment. Um, there's the public portal, there are announcements here. So lots of information, but some of the best information is over here on the right side. So on the right side here, we have this direct DRGR login link. And when you click on that, it's going to take you directly to the login page, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, and then down here, you have some other help desk features like the AAQ, resetting passwords, getting session resets, if you have urgent requests. So. For you beginners, this, this page is a really, really handy resource for you. So when you click on DRGR login, it is going to take you all, it's not gonna take you there, don't go there. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. Um, it's gonna go here to this page, it's gonna look like this. Um, and then you're going to enter your username and your password. Um, before I log in, because <clears throat> once I log in, I have to, you know, remember to stay active and all of that, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. But before I log in, I'm going to show you that fact sheet crosswalk that Hannah mentioned. Um, and I think this is the one you're talking about, right, Hannah? Yes, this is it. Okay. So, again, if you are back here on the, the DRGR page from the HUD Exchange, if you just go down to this um, fact sheet section, click on that. This is under release 8.0. Um, you can see that up here in the title. So for release 8.0, this fact sheet was um, included. And you can see here um, a lot of information about navigating. Um, and then there is this crosswalk. And this crosswalk is great, especially for those of you who have been around for a little bit. So you pros out there who are really familiar with DRGR and MicroStrategy. Um, but maybe, you know, are used to using those the, the folder in MicroStrategy called DRGR OLAP. We'll talk about that when we log in. But those are the, the old the old version of the reports, and we really want you to be using DRGR Analytics, which is the, the more updated version of reports, so you have um, the most current and best data. But some of you may remember those old legacy report names, and you know those are burned into your brain. <laughs> and so you remember Financial Report 7, and you're, you need to know, what is it called now in analytics? Well, it's, now it's called um, F67, Financial Report 67. So this is a, like a nice little crosswalk um, that just shows you the old name and the new name. It also gives you the, you know, the full list of reports here with, you can easily run through this list and see, okay, here are all the performance reports. Which of these reports could be helpful to me? Um, so that's helpful too. And then um, this also has um, some of the tips that we'll go over today with respect to formatting reports and, you know, things like that. Um, this chart down here, it gives you the, the report name, the legacy name, and then the different attributes of the report. So what would be included in the report? So for, let's say, we want to look at Let's say we want to look at, we'll just take this first one here, Responsible Organizations A12. Um, 
that report's going to have addresses, the city, the DUNS number, the grantee's name, the responsible organization, the state, and the zip code. Um, <clears throat> and you can filter by responsible organization, the row status. So this is a really great report to let you know, or um, resources to let you know what each report is called and then the kind of information that would show up in those reports. And as Hannah said, all of these reports are extremely useful. And so just taking, you know, 10, 15 minutes to look through this would be really um, beneficial to you because you'll start to get a better understanding of what the reports can provide to you and how you might be able to use them to manage your own programs. It's definitely a great resource. All right, so I'm back here on the login page and I'm going to go ahead and log in. When you go to log into DRGR, you should always, you know, look over these rules that you are agreeing to by clicking on this box and then click login. All right. I have multiple accounts, so I picked the one that I want to use today, and that brings us to our landing page here. So when we first log into DRGR, it is going to look like this. Um, you know, while we see our action items in the middle, um, our news, our announcements, the um, direct links to resources over here. And so if you're in DRGR and you need to get that Relief 8.0 fact sheet, right here's a link for fact sheets, and you can just click on that and go grab that fact sheet. Um, but we want to work in reports. <clears throat> and so in DRGR, uh, as those of you who are currently using the system know, at the top we have our um, list of modules. And we want to work in DRGR analytics, which is the pie chart. So we're going to go to this pie chart up here, DRGR Analytics, and then that will open the Data Analytics menu. And from there, you're going to click Reports. Now, once you click on Reports, it's actually going to open a new browser tab. So as you can see, here's my DRGR browser tab, and here is my MicroStrategy browser tab. They are separate. Um, and DRGR requires you to be active in the system at least once every 20 minutes, or it will log you out. So just keep that in mind, because reports can be uh, a pretty fun place to be, honestly. And so you end up spending a lot of time over there sort of investigating um, different reports, pulling information, and as you're doing that, um, you can kind of lose track of time. And so when you're in MicroStrategy, just remember to come over here and, you know, kind of just bounce around, make sure, you know, you're doing something to keep the system active so that you don't log yourself out. Um, that's just a, a little pro tip um, to make sure you, you don't accidentally log yourself out of DRGR, because uh, if you do, you'll have to wait about 20 to 30 minutes to log back in. All right, so here I am in MicroStrategy, and we have the two folders here, DRGR OLAP and DRGR Analytics. This OLAP folder, just pretend it's not there, because these are those old reports that I was talking to you about before. Um, you know, in that crosswalk that I showed you, the, um, the old report name is in there, and then it gives you the um, crosswalk to this analytics. And someone just asked me if I can make my screen bigger. So let me see if I can do that. Better? I think that's probably better. It looks bigger to me. If, if you need a little bit more adjustment, let me know. Okay. Excellent, okay. So again, um, since that was so tiny before, let me just recap. Over here, this DRG or OLAP, just pretend that's not there. That is the old version of reports. Um, over here, DRG or analytics. And you can even see that, you know, the, the, the last updated date on OLAP is 2019. Um, so that's old, you don't wanna use that anymore. You wanna be in DRG or analytics. Um, so you click on that folder. 
All right, now once you're in this folder, you're going to have these different options for shared reports, my reports, history list, and my subscriptions. These are all things Hannah reviewed and we're going to talk about again. You also have those same options down the left hand side here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click on shared reports, which is going to get us into the report list. That brings us to these different folders. Now, the folders you see here will be different depending on your access. Um, so I have a HUD view only access, so I'm seeing some you know, additional reports that you might not see, but um, you, will, you will definitely see the admin, finance, history, compliance, grants, and performance, well, compliance and performance reports for sure. Um, you'll see those. And again, uh, if you review that crosswalk, you'll get a sense of the different types of reports in each of these folders. But I think, as Hannah said, it's pretty self-explanatory. Admin is going to be anything related to things like users, responsible organizations. Finance is obviously draws, program income, obligations, budgets, um, that sort of thing. And then your global performance is things like outcomes. So, you know, how many beneficiaries? race, ethnicity of those beneficiaries, income levels, um, those types of things. So let's just go ahead into global finance, since a lot of you said, I think that was the, the, highest, the highest count were folks who said, I want to know more about finance reports. So we'll go in here. Now, one thing I wanted to note, um, sometimes people get, you know, they feel a little bit lost <laughs> once they start digging in because, you know, you're kind of like going a little bit deeper with every click. At the top of the screen here, there is this breadcrumb trail. So if you are in global finance and you're like, wait, oh, I really just wanted to be over in, in performance, um, you can come up here to share reports and it will take you back. Um, however, you can also come over here to the side, but sometimes people, you know, they close this and then they get confused about how to get that back open. And so, you know, learning the techniques for navigating around, are, I think it's pretty simple, but I like to show folks the different ways that you can find your way back to where you were, because everybody learns a little bit differently. So you have this breadcrumb trail up here. You also have this side list where you can bounce around from the different global folders. So I could pop over to performance here, or I could go up to admin. Um, in this side uh, menu here, we still have um, access to my report and our history list and our subscriptions as well. Um, so you can easily get back to those things there. You don't have to go all the way back to shared reports to access them, but you can. Another way to go back is you can use your um, back buttons here in MicroStrategy. So never use your browser's back buttons, um, which are up here next to the web address. Don't use those use the back buttons that are inside the system. And that's true with DRGR as well. When you're in DRGR, always navigate around using the functionality within the system. Don't use your browser's back buttons or anything like that. That can cause you to get kicked out. Okay, so that's just some, some basic tips on navigation. Um, kind of letting you know how to find the reports, how to move back and forth and that sort of thing. So here we are in our financial reports folder. And we're going to go down and, and just choose a report so I can kind of show you the um, some functionality once you're with, you know, you're inside a report. So let's look at um, F67. All these reports here are, you know, very useful. I tend to pull F67 pretty often. It's just a report that I like. I like the way it's set up. Um, I like the information that it gives. Uh, but, you know, there are lots of other reports that have information that could be useful to you depending on your, your, your role in your organization, like Hannah said. You know, we're all doing different things in the system. So the report that we need may be different than the report that our colleague needs. Um, this just happens to be one that I end up pulling pretty frequently. It's a little bit slow right now, but um, probably. So my my access is HUD view only access, so I have access to view 
every grant. Um, so sometimes it takes a little bit longer to load. Uh, it shouldn't take this long for, for your information to load. But as you can see, even as this is loading, we have some functionality down here at the bottom of the screen. Um, we can cancel it if it's loading now, but you can also add it to your history list right from this screen, which is um, really nice. Throughout MicroStrategy and throughout DRGR, there are always, for, for almost every function, not every function, but many, there are different ways to get to where you want to be. Um, so it's become a very user-friendly system um, where, you know, you have the options to go back and move about um, DRGR and MicroStrategy from different points of the system. You don't always have to start at the beginning. <clears throat> Okay, here we go. So I made it in. So I'm in this report. Um, up here um, up at the top, let's just do a little bit more navigation discussion and we will um, then go into the report and I'll show you a little bit about modifying the report itself. So up here we have our different menu options. Um, under this menu option, we have some options to add to history lists, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, we can subscribe here. We can export here. We can print here as well. Um, so these, you know, these options are, could be useful to you. There is also a tools option, um, which gives you some other um, ways to customize the view that you have on the page. We have the data link which allows us to do some of the, you know, the, the sorting and um, renaming, swapping rows, columns, things like that. And then there's the grid where you can kind of change the view and then the format here. Um, so you can see um, how you can look at the report in different ways. So. I tend to just use these um, icons the most, I'd say. So if you hover over these icons, you can see, you know, this shows me the grid view. If the data is able to be graphed, there are options for graphing here. Um, you can see it as a grid and a graph if that's an available option. You can add it to your history list from here. So now we've now seen three different ways we can add this report to our history list, right? As it was loading, we could have clicked that link. We can go up here under report home and we can add to our history list from here or we can click here and add it from here as well. So there are multiple ways to add it to your history list and we'll talk about that more in a minute. <clears throat> you can create a personal view for this page. Um, you can share this report, then you can print it. Um, you can schedule a delivery to your history list. This is what Hannah was talking about with, um, you know, setting it up so that it goes to your history list like a subscription. Um, and then this is to export into an Excel file. Then this is to export into a PDF. And so you, the, the, people sometimes get confused between these two, I think, because they're small. But just keep in mind to ex ex export um, into an Excel file it's gonna look like a little table. So you have that little grid-like format there. To export into a PDF, it looks more like the Adobe sign. So just an easy way to keep in mind. When the screen's a lot smaller, sometimes it's harder to tell the difference, um, but you can use these icons to do the export and they're right there. Um, and I'll show you the export more in a moment. But if you do, if you prefer to use the menu option and you go up to report home, and you do export from there. There is a PDF and an Excel, and then these other formatting options here as well. <clears throat> so different ways to get to the same result. And I'll show you um, what it looks like when you actually do the export in a moment, but let's just finish the navigation discussion. <clears throat> all right, and then down here on the, the right-hand side of your screen, you have the list of all of the, the um, financial reports that are in the financial reports folder. So again, you can always use this breadcrumb trail to go back to global finance here if you wanted to find a different report. But you can also just scroll down the side here and say you picked F67, but you're like, oh wait, it doesn't actually give me what I want. I really wanted, you know, F62, and you want to go back up there. So you can easily just, um, you know, move about the reports. 
and then it would take you over here um, to the new report. Um, <clears throat> so again, we've got, you know, the option to add things down here, pretty handy. So I'm going to just go back to the global finance folder because I don't really need that report to load. And I'm going to go back to um, the reports that I wanted to work in. So, so have there been any questions coming in that we, um, that would, might be beneficial for the group to hear sort of an answer to? Not yet. I just took over in the Q&A. Um, but no, to answer your question, not yet. But maybe towards the end we may have something. Okay, great. So this is processing. I probably shouldn't have showed you how to click around because it's a little bit, um, it's a minute to load. But uh, as this is loading, um, just to recap, um, as you enter uh, the reports folder, you're going to click on the folder that you want to find the report in, either admin, finance, performance, compliance, um, and then you can access the report. As you can see, there's lots of different ways to move around and, and find your way back, um, which is really helpful. So we've been talking about access and navigation. Um, so once this report loads, I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you some different ways to customize the report. And then I'll show you how you can download that report, save it um, to your history list or to the My Reports um, option and then I'll show you how to subscribe. You can even see here on the screen, usually, um, it's a, you know, it's usually a little faster, so I don't spend as much time looking at this screen, but you can even see here on the screen that it gives you the old report name, so for those of you folks who have been doing this for a long time um, and like to, you know, make sure you're working in those reports that you used to like to work in, um, it'll give you the old report name here on the screen as well. Give it another minute or so, and if this continues to stall, um, I'll go back and maybe try to pick something that's a little bit uh, a smaller report. This report is great. Um, like I said, there are, there are great reports for lots of things that you might need to do in the system. This one does have a lot of data, though. Um, it it allows you to see your all of your activities um, and have them sortable by your um, activity number, title, type, national objective, status, responsible organization, that then gives you for each activity um, the budget, the total obligations, um, <clears throat> the grant funds dispersed, the program income received, and I'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller because we can't see everything here. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Okay, hopefully that's still big enough that everybody can see. If it's not, just let me know. Um, but over here, so we can now see everything, and we have, um, again, budget, obligation, grant funds dispersed, PI received, PI dispersed, total dispersed, which is your grant funds and your PI together, your total expended, which is the amount of funds that you've recorded in your QPR over time, um, so the difference between dispersed and expended is that dispersed is the amounts that have been recorded through your creation of vouchers. Um, expended is the amount that's been recorded through your entries in your QPR. And then it'll show you the percent that's dispersed based on um, the disbursement amount versus your budget. And then um, it'll give you your available um, budget uh, based on what you've already spent in dollars. So lots of information on this page, right? Um, and, you know, sometimes we may want to see it in different ways. 
So up here, this page by axis that um, Hannah mentioned has several things. It has the program, the appropriation. Um, it has, um, you know, the name of the grantee, the grant number, and um, what grant level we're at, whether it's a, you know, child grant or not. And so up here, you know, as I said, if you have multiple grants, if you want to switch to a different grant, you can click on that and then choose a different grant for the same grantee. So as, you know, you, you're logging in for your organization, you're going to be the only grantee that you can see information for, but you might have multiple grants, right? So maybe you have had many disasters in your community, and so you might have, you know, several grants listed just like this. And so you can choose which grant you want to view information for. And just remember that, that this is an option because you may log in and think you're looking at one grant when you're really looking at another. So make sure that, you know, you're choosing the right grant here so that you're seeing the information that you need to see. Um, you can also, so that's doing it by appropriation, which I think is probably easiest um, to start. But you can also sort by grant number. So um, you can just enter your grant number here. And again, you can see it, you know, at the child grant level or the parent grant level for those of you who do have consolidated grants. So that's one way to go through and change these, um, these uh, criteria on the page by access so that you're filtering the information that you're seeing. Once you're happy with that, and you know you're looking at the right grant and the right appropriation. We have these columns that go across here. So activity number, title, type, national objective, all of this. So sometimes um, we may just want to look at data for a particular national objective, let's say. So we want to just see all of the urgent need activities or all of the low mod activities. One thing you can do is you can export this report and then do a, um, a search in your exported file. But if you just need a quick check and you don't need to have that file, you know, as a, you know, a separate document, one thing you can do that's really cool is you, if you left click on the column, keep your finger on it, and then pull it up. You see that yellow bar emerges? If you pull it up, all the way up to this page by access, and then you drop it in. So say, you know, you can drop it in anywhere. It makes sense to you but there, you'll have a little vertical line that, that appears. You see that little yellow line moving about. I find a place I want to put it. I put it here and I release my finger from that left mouse click. You can see that national objective now comes up here to this, this toolbar, this page by toolbar, um, which is great because now I can choose to see all of my low mod activities and these are all low mod activities or I can switch and choose to see all of my urgent need activities. And then it'll pull up just my urgent need activities, okay? Um, if I want to change and see just those that are NA, which is probably all of my admin, I can do that here as well. Um, so lots of different ways, you know, that you can, and you can do this with all of the different columns, so if you wanted to further um, modify this to so say, okay, I don't want that there anymore. I want that to go back to where it was. You can go ahead and pull this back down and put it anywhere you want, really. You can put it back in here. Um, you can put it in a different column. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stick it back in. And then it goes back into this uh, main report. So again, you can also pull it up by activity type to so say, I want to be able to see all of my activities that are just new construction. Um, so I go ahead and I put that up in that page by access, and then I can choose, um, I can choose the new construction. There's lots of options here. So let me try to find it. Let's start here. There it is, construction of new housing. 
and now you can see all these activities are just construction of new housing. So a lot of different ways, you know, um, now these are all low mod, but say you had some urgent need in here. If you then wanted to pull it up, um, you could filter it then just by the national objective. But let's say we also want to filter by um, responsible, responsible organization. So now we've sorted this so that all of these are new construction. If we then wanted to just sort by a responsible organization, we could, again, you left click, keep your finger on it, pull it up until that yellow bar is where you want it to be, release it. And now we can sort also by the responsible organization. Um, and so these are different ways uh, for you to be able to, you know, move things around and better filter for what you want to see. Okay, and again, any of these columns you can do that with, so that's just a good thing to know. Um, so something else you can do is move um, move things from the page by access bar da back down here. If you if you for some reason wanted to add this as a field, you could go ahead and move this down, and then the appropriation would appear in this column as well. So those are just some different ways that you can modify these reports to make them custom to what you want them to be. All right, now let's say, um, I'm gonna move that back up. And let's say I want my, um, I want the activity type to be something that I sort by. Put that back up there. Now let's say I love the way this report is set up. This is the kind of report I always want to be able to see when I go into DRGR. So you can then um, save this as um, one of your uh, My Report options. So if you go to the Report Home and then go to Save As, it allows you to add this to My Reports. Now, when you add it to My Reports, it is adding it in exactly the format that you have structured it. So when you go into My Reports, you're always gonna see it just as you have it set up right now with the columns in the places where you put them. You don't have to modify the columns or the page by access before you do this. You can just use the regular default report and still save it to My Reports, but it will give you a shortcut directly to that report um, when you go to the My Reports folder. You can even change the name of it. Um, so if, say you wanted to sort F F67 in a, a variety of ways, you can, you know, give it a name, uh, you know, like by, by activity type or by responsible organization. Um, so that way it would pull it with those filters in place the way you put it together. So I'm just gonna, Leave it as it is with the name and the description, but you can modify this information that's in here. And I'm gonna say okay. So that this then is saved. So I can then run the newly saved report or I can go to my original report. I'm just gonna go back to my original report. And I'm going to show you then that if I use this, this breadcrumb trail to go back here to shared reports, and pull the My Reports folder, you're gonna be able to see that, um, you're gonna be able to see it in there. Um, and I'm a little hesitant to do that because I know how long it's gonna take me to get back. So I think if I go ahead and try to save as here, you'll see it, yep, you'll see it listed in the reports that I have saved already, and there it is, I just saved it. So you know that it worked, right? Before we um, conclude for today, I will go back and show you the My Reports folder so you can see you can easily get to these reports that you decided are, are your favorite. Um, it's sort of like a little shortcut for you to be able to say, oh, you know, I love these five reports. I'm gonna put them in My Reports folder. And then that way I go right to My Reports and My Reports are right there. I don't have to shuffle through the different global folders. All right, so that's My Reports. Um, now, one, another thing you can do is save this to your history list. Um, and what that does is it captures a moment in time and saves it for history, right? Um, 
So if you were to say, okay, I really, this report today told me a lot of information. I don't want to lose this. Um, you can always download it and save it, but you can also put it in your MicroStrategy history list. And so if I go over here um, to my history list, you can just click on this uh, icon here that has like a little clock. Um, you can click on that to save it to your history list, and then it's been added. I could also go up to the report home and click Save As. Oh, no, that just takes me to the report. Sorry. Um, yeah. So saving it to the history. Oh, goodness. Saving it to the history list. Um, using this little icon is a nice way to do it. And once you've done it, it does gray it out. So um, it's already been saved to the history list. So it's there for today. Um, I will show you the history list then before we log out as well so you can see that it is saved there. Um, it is a nice um, way to collect information and, and save it when you know that it's something you might want to refer back to. All right. Um, again, you can share, you can print, and you can schedule to deliver this to your history list. So let's say I wanted to basically, this is creating a subscription. You want to create a subscription for this. So you click on um, this little icon that says, well, it says um, send to history list. So if you say subscribe to history list, this is always going to um, send this report as you've structured it on a schedule. So this schedule is set up for the 10th of the month at 6.15 a.m. Every 10th of the month at 6.15 a.m., I'm going to get this report. You could also have it sent on lots of other different timetables. So say you want it sent every day or you want it sent at the end of the month or you want it sent every Friday. Um, or maybe it's a quarterly basis that you want it sent on, or maybe it's the first of the month. So lots of different ways, weekdays only, week, you know, any once a week on Mondays, lots of different ways to customize the schedule. But this is really useful in managing your program. So, you know, if you are someone who's in charge, in charge of managing this, but you have to give a report to your supervisors or contribute information to a report at the end of every month, and that information, you know, is due by the fifth day of the next month or something like that. You can have this report run for you on the last day of every month. This will automatically be saved into your history list, so you'll always be able to access the report as a snapshot in time at that last day of every month. Um, and then you can go back to reference it and use that information to pull that, you know, pull that data together that you need. Um, it's also just a way for you to, you know, always have a snapshot in time that's being um, saved for you automatically without you really having to think about it. So this is like a great, a great way to do it. And if I say go, I go ahead and say, okay, I want it delivered on the 10th of the month. My subscription was successfully created. All right. So now I'm going to show you um, download. And then I'll show, go back into the folder so you can see where all these things are, where I put them for my reports, history list, subscriptions, those sorts of things. So for downloads, again, you can download us several ways. You can download by um, exporting using these icons up here. The one that looks like a chart will export to Excel. The one that looks like a PDF will export to PDF. Um, you can also go to report home and then go to export down here and you have the same options, okay? You can also subscribe over here by doing uh, the subscription here and you can subscribe to your history list. Um, so those are different ways to get to the, you know, the same things that you can get to by just using these icons up here. So if you're an icon person or a menu person, you have options. Um, so let's just look, I, I often um, download as Excel because it gives you the option to um, modify the data in an Excel file. Some folks like to use the data in different ways, merge it into other reports that they have and things like that. So if I click the export to Excel, I get a screen that looks like this. 
This allows you to modify how the information is going to be exported over here. I typically leave it as it is. You can export it with the formatting added, but if you do that, I find it's much less user friendly to manipulate for other purposes. So I tend to just keep it as plain text. And then some people get to this page and they're like, but wait, where do I export? I don't understand. Just all the way over here <laughs> in the on the, the right hand side is the actual export button. So it kind of hides over here, especially if you have your screen pretty small. Sometimes you don't really see it. It's a pretty small button, but it's over there on the right, right hand side. You click export. And again, it is going to download that file as um, an Excel file. And if I open that up, take just a moment to load. And then I'll pull it back over and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see here, you know, it's opening new tabs for me. So again, if you were, you know, working in DRGR, you want to keep popping over your DRGR chat tab to um, make sure. See, it's asking me um, if I am if I want more time. Yes, I want more time. So make sure you're always popping over to DRGR. Make sure you're active. Okay, so I'm going to pull my report over here so you can see what it looks like. It lets me. I'll let that work and then I'll pull it over when it opens finally. Okay, but if I want to go back to my report, you just use the, the tab at the top of your screen. Okay, here we go. So I was able to get that report opened. And let me expand that so you can see what it'll look like when it downloads. So I downloaded this report um, just with, you know, as an Excel file with, um, plain formatting. And you can see here, it gives you all the information at the top of the page with respect to the program activity type appropriation. And then that same data that you saw across the page is there. Um, you can expand the columns and then, you know, see that full data, and then you can manipulate it as you would any Excel file. I just want to give you a sense of what that would look like. All right. So we've covered, you know, how to navigate around in reports, you know, where to find these different features like history list, my report, um, how to modify reports once you've opened them. And then we explained that those modified reports can be saved to your my reports folder, which then allows you to access the reports in the format that you wanted them. Um, anytime and that data will be brand new data of the moment data versus your history list which is a moment in time that you want to preserve for history right so i'm going to go back to my shared reports folder using this breadcrumb trail up here and up here um you know i have my uh my all my global folders here i also have the different um folders over here that i would want to access like my reports my history list and my subscription. So let's go ahead and look at those because I did add some information. So you saw me create a addition to the My Reports folder for the S67 report. Um, if I am able to open that, I will show you that it is going to um, include, you know, the all the information of the moment. Um, and a minute. If it doesn't load, I'll go back and I'll show you the other features that I just added as well. Oh, 
So this is pulling the data that's in DRGR currently from my reports. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go back. <clears throat> so <clears throat> as you can see, this is just one report, but there may be others that you use frequently and you want to store here and you want to store them in that format that you've customized and that's what will happen if you add them to my report okay so that's my report history list i added one report to history list as we were talking and it shows you here when it was created so um created on january 26th at 2 57 p.m it also allows me to um export this report right from here um, you don't even have to open it so that's helpful um, it gives you the details option here um, so and you can also rename it so if you you know find that in the future you wish you had called it something else you can rename it right from here and if you no longer want this in your history list you can also delete it by clicking that, that button there all right so that's the history list. Again, remember, this is a moment in time. It is historical information versus my reports, which pulls a fresh report with fresh data every time. And then finally, my subscriptions. Um, I set up a, a subscription here. Um, you can see all the subscriptions I have on this page. Um, and as you can see here, you know, I can click on this to open it. It gives me the schedule. Um, this um, action column allows me to edit some of this and then I can always unsubscribe if I don't want this anymore. Okay, I think that covers all the components that we wanted to cover. Hannah, is there anything else you wanted me to show folks? No, I think that was really helpful. Um, you know, Jennifer, actually, if you could, could you pull up the crosswalk one more time? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a good way to end. Um, because I've been answering some questions and nothing I want to read out loud, but I've gotten some specific questions about what's in what reports. And so I think showing this crosswalk again will be really helpful. I think this is a good place to always start if you have any questions. Um, and if this is not helpful for some reason, um, you could always reach out, you know, go into MicroStrategy and look at the different reports or reach out to your grant manager if you had any questions, per se. Mm -hmm. um, we also had, I had a couple of people reach out with um, some issues they have in the system. So we're going to do some one-on-one -on -one kind of TA with people. But um, no, I think I think this has been really helpful. Um, we'll give everyone a minute or two to see if we get any last questions. Mm -hmm. So for the person who was asking, like, what's in what report, this crosswalk gives you exactly what's in every report, right? So if I go down, so I was demonstrating for you F67, and you saw that on the screen. Um, but if I go down to F67 in this crosswalk, it's showing me. Um, so here's F67. Make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so here's F67, and it's showing me exactly what's in the report. Um, activity number, title, type, appropriation, the appropriation code, the grant number, the grantee name, national objective, program, responsible org state. And then it has these filterable metrics of the grant fund dispersed, program income dispersed, PI received, total budget, total expended, total obligation. It also has these metrics for um, grant funds dispersed, PI dispersed. I received and you know all these other things here so this report if you want to know what's in a report this is that crosswalk that you want to see because it gives you literally every field and every report um, and so you know again if you are trying to figure out um, issues related to program income you can page through here and find the program income related reports and then just look through these metrics and see is it going to give you the information that you need um, if you care about vouchers and you're trying to, you know, reconcile some voucher information, there are several reports on vouchers. Uh, so beginning around F42, different voucher reports, you can go ahead and look through the attributes here to see which of these voucher reports would be useful to you. Thank you.
Anything else, Anna? No, I am. I'm answering one last question here. Okay. Um, I think I think we're good to go. All right. And so just as a reminder, um, this webinar has been recorded. Um, the slides, the recording, and the transcript will be made available on the HUD Exchange. Um, again, back over here on the HUD Exchange, uh, in the section for DRGR guides, tools, and webinars on this DRGR system page um, of the HUD Exchange. You can go ahead and click on that, and in probably about a week or so, um, you can go to this webinars, demonstration videos, past trainings, because it will be a past training at that point, and then um, it will be listed here. Um, and, you know, if you are new to DRGR, this is a great place to go to see what trainings you may have missed about DRGR. Um, so new grantees that are working on your public action plan, there are a couple public action plan webinars that you could access there as well. Um, so lots of great information um, on the HUD exchange. <clears throat> but that's where you can find all the recordings and um, information related to this training in probably about a week or so. So with that, I guess we can go ahead and wrap up today's session. Thank you all for joining us. Um, we hope that this was helpful to you. Again, if you do have any questions about reports, um, you are always welcome to submit and ask a question. Let me show you that too. If you go back over to the, the DRGR um, program page on the HUD Exchange, over here on the Help Desk um, toolbar, you have an option to submit and ask a question. You can always send a question in if you're having trouble with reports, um, either making it do what you want it to do, or if the data doesn't quite look like what you expected, uh, you can always submit a question and we can try to walk you through um, understanding what's wrong or if maybe there is something wrong, um, getting that information fixed. So any questions in the future, feel free to reach out that way. Um, but we hope this has been helpful and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Yes, thank you everyone. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you.